one of my viewers has sent this in for us. It's a, a little shovel he uses for sand, for shoveling casts of sand with. And he actually put it in his sand mix and it smashed the handle off. Uh, he wants me to make a handle for it. I've got a bit of aluminium here which is sort of ready made for the job. I'll shorten it down a bit, clean that up and simply weld it in. Quite a nicely, quite a nicely made affair. Right, so I'll shorten that down, cut that out and weld it in and that's, that'll be done for him. He did say the hand that was on was too short, so I mean, I mean I've got quite big hands. So probably about there will be ideal. Spent a fair bit of time with the file on these, just rounding the edges off. I just want to take off any machining more. Basically, they look very much like the ones I grew up, except these are made out of steel. Right, I've eventually caught up to more or less where I, where I was before I broke that bear and keep. But those ones look alright. A lot stronger. Right, that's all I did and then it went off with a bag. That feels nice. Nice and tight the way it should be, but not not binding up, just nice. Oh, and bass up we just it's a really good fit this flywheel on the end of the crank.
I'm going to put the valve chest on now as a gasket goes between this face and the valve chest. That's a gasket I made the other week. In the olden days, I was all kinds of evil preparations. I used to put on gaskets, uh, some horrible stuff. All I'm using is a little bit of ordinary grease with some graphite flake mixed in with it. And that will be perfectly adequate. It also means that you can take it apart and it doesn't damage the gasket, it won't get damaged. It's messy but it does the job. There's three ports on this face here, that's actually called a port face. Strangely enough, you've got a top port which takes steam to the top of the cylinder, a bottom port which takes it to the bottom, and a centre port which goes to an exhaust port there. It's quite clever the way the slide valve works. I'll try and give a brief explanation of it uh, as we assemble it. That's the actual valve there, it's called a D-valve, it's a D-shape. In the back of the, the valve there's a, a recess there. This recess constantly covers the exhaust port and alternatively covers inlet and exhaust port which means that the exhaust and steam goes into this hole through the exhaust port as it comes down it lets steam into the top. I'll show it, or at least I'll try and show how it works as we'll get more of it assembled. When I got this, this wasn't a really good fit. A lot of these stones were bent. I uh, repaired some of them, or bent some of them. But we've got it to a stage now where it, it seems to go together quite well. One important thing is this valve must be free to fluid. It's only held against that port face by the, the pressure of the steam inside the, the valve chest. You can see what goes up and down. I'm covering ports alternatively. The valve is operated by this thing, this is an eccentric, like a, a type of crank. The eccentric strap, the outer part, was really one of the best parts of the, the engine, absolutely beautifully made, and I made the, the centre part that was completely missing. And that goes under the crankshaft like that, and there's a rod goes between here and the valve to control the valve itself. That's the, the rod, there's a little bit of surface rust on it. I just want to polish the, polish the rust off and just clean it up a little bit, but not too much. This has been handmade, you can see that actually fail marks on it. As you can see I've cleaned the rod up, not polished it, just cleaned it as best I can without doing any great damage to it. It goes into a socket down there and that's actually a tape I pin that goes in there that holds it in nice and tight and it's just simply pinned through onto the valve actuating rod. Right, that's the, the tape I pin. That'll be Knocked into there and we we'll finally finished assembling it in the end cut off. And there's a little I'm just going to gently ease out with a nice smooth file. Right, that's fitting a lot better now. The pin that goes through there is a nice fit, but it's had a bit of a miserable life on the end of it. See it's all misshapen and gnarly. I'll put in the lathe and just give it a little bit tickle up probably just with a file just to make it I mean I could make a new one but I don't want to make a new one because this is the the one that came with it somebody's actually probably made that by hand with a file and it is a good fit in the hole very good fit I've got to fit the bastard and not go in Real good fit in the hole. All at once is a little bit of time spending on it with a file. It'd be really easy just to remake all these. 
Oh, it's probably stainless steel, but I want to try and keep as much of the original engine as I possibly can. And straight away that looks a lot better. drilling through there to keep that lubricated there's a little hole in there for a split pin I must get some some small split pins goes in there, tapped in, and then we get the end cut off when we're finished working on it and we're finished assembling it, once we get the valve timing set, which is what we're going to do next. Right, if I turn the engine over, you can see the valve moving up and down. The first thing you need to set is the valve stroke, and it must uncover both ports in equal amount. That's an inlet port there, and that's an inlet port at the bottom. In the end, if you cover, covered, and uncovered an equal amount, which they are. That's adjusted by loosening off that square-headed bolt and moving the position of the valve on the valve spindle. As you can see, the valve is free to fluid. It's sealed against the port face by the pressure of the steam. Nothing else. Next, we need to set the position of the valve. I would like the engine to run clockwise from the front, which is that direction. So all I do, I turn the engine to top dead centre, which is there. And I can move this eccentric, loosen it off on the crank, so it's free to move. And I need to move that until it top dead centre, it's just on the verge of uncovering that port. In fact, slightly before, slightly before top dead centre, I want the port just cracking open, which is about there. This has a, a cushioning effect on the engine. It allows steam in just before it gets to the top of its stroke. Right, so it's on top dead centre. When it gets on the bottom dead centre, it's just opening the bottom port. So basically that's a valve timing set, it would actually run at that. I think what I'll do, I'll parcel it up and put some, so I can't put steam on it, I'll put some compressed air on, just see if we can get it running. One of my viewers actually sent us in a couple of bags of these quarter Whitworth and 516 Whitworth nuts, which is ideal because modern nuts just don't look right on here. I've actually got a 316 Whitworth spanner, but bastard things at work. Johnny Mark. Let's screw a valve in there just so I can regulate the compressed air into it. Right next we need a cylinder head putting on which I have got made on the gasket. This cylinder head's something I made as well. It needs to go outside in the garden and lie and rust a little bit to make it look the same as this. I need some more studs making wood three will be enough just to just to get it running. So basically 
If I give this some compress to it, it should run. I'll take the run. That nose jacket on is probably the fly with no painting on. It's just again it's just time to see you thanks for watching thanks for subscribing as always thanks for all the well wishes and keep coming in thanks for watching as what is that the bastard no it's not it's a bit of tissue paper uh. or something